Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. I got a request the other day. Somebody wanted to know some tips on welding, and I was going to kind of break it down and do a basic overview of all the different types of welding positions and what you need to look for and what you need to understand. And I'm going to try my best to get some good arc shots so y'all can actually see what's going on. That, for some reason, my arc shots, I've tried them over the years, and they're, it's very, very hard to capture unless you have somebody actually filming. So I'm going to try it again. So anyways, we're going to just do a basic o overview. I'm going to use some of the most popular rods that, that are out there, and I'm going to show you some of my tips. So let's take a look at it and get started. Alright, we're going to get started with the beginner rod here. This here is a 6011, 332nd. And the arrow that I got pointing there, that's showing the angle of the rod. If you notice, I'm burning into the bottom plate right there, trying to tie into that top weld. The technique that I'm using here is known as a whip and pause technique. Uh, you can tell I'm putting a little bit of movement in it. I'm advancing forward a little bit and then coming back into the back half of my puddle. So that's a 6011. Pretty common technique. Uh, 6010 is also the same way. Okay, this here is the second pass. I went ahead and already cleaned it beforehand. And uh, if you notice, I'm trying to burn in halfway into that first bead that we laid. And you can tell my rod angle a little bit is a little bit different, as you can tell. And uh, the same technique, whip and pause, back and forth. And uh, that's uh, pretty much how you stack beads. If you're going to put one on top of that one, it would be a little bit lower as you go higher. And uh, this right here is I was just warming up, make sure I could still, to be honest, see if I could even film this. So it was a little bit tricky. But now we're going to switch it to AC on the machine. And I'm using a square wave 175. Right here I'm showing the angle that I put my rod in. Now some people may not be able to have this kind of stinger so you may have to bend your rod. So I'm just showing a, a restart right here and going to tie back into another weld. And you notice my rod angle right there. Like I said there, my rod angle is a little bit steep but this right here is a 6013. It's pretty forgiving. Uh, as you can tell, I was running this rod on AC. So we'll just clear that little pass up right there. And we'll move on to the next part. Okay, I'm chipping off the slag here. I want to show you all something really important. If you notice when I set my welder, I set it probably around 80 amps somewhere around in there just guessing and it was a little bit cold for me I like to burn a little bit hotter than most people and uh, especially on vertical up you drop your amperage down because you don't need a whole lot of amperage because you'll, you'll blow through metal a lot of times but this is what I wanted to point out you can see that hole right there I'm fixing to point to it if you can't already see it right there and like I said, that's a slag hole caused by a bad startup. That was my bad. So the trick is to start up high and then come in way back into your crater. Okay, we're running another pass right here. This is the 6013, 332nd. This is on AC. You can hear the buzz in the background. And uh, I'm just trying to keep a really tight arc. You can notice my angle. I'm pushing the puddle up. And I'm doing a little bit of oscillation back and forth. Uh, it seems to me that most rods, they like movement. You don't always have to put movement in them, but it sure does help. Some rods you can just drag, but in this case, 6013, I like to put a little movement. Right here is the restart. I went all the way back into my crater. And then uh, the technique that I do to, for a restart is I come back into the crater and I do a little whip. And this one I really didn't, I just kind of paused. 6013, it builds up not as well as some other rods, so I, I wanted to fill in that crater a little bit better. And when you go to the end of a joint, be sure that you pause for a second. I'm sorry, I ran out of camera angle there. Couldn't really see it. 
I just want to pause for a moment and come back out of it. Okay, this rod right here, if you notice, the sound's a little bit different. This is a 7018, and it's a 332nd, just like the other ones now. We're running this one on DC positive, so I had to go over to the machine and switch it. But I was going to show you how much smoother this rod is compared to the 6013, especially on AC. But uh, this right here is the number one rod used in industry. I've probably used 85% of all structural welds, at least in the United States, is done with a 7018. And you can tell, I'm, I'm, once again, I'm trying to keep a very, very tight arc. And uh, 7018, you want to set it hot enough that it, you can hold a tight arc and it won't stick. That's the way you want to burn it. If you notice that all of them I've been I've been stopping them halfway so I could show restarts. On this one, I went all the way. If you notice, my rod angle, too, is getting a little bit too steep. That's because the uh, camera was in the way. As you can tell, it makes a real nice coating of flux. It looks real uniform. You can, you can bet that it lays in there really well. If you notice that it got a little lumpy up towards the top, that's because my rod angle changed. As, as I told you, my camera got in the way a little bit. And that's a very, very common mistake, is to pick up your rod angle as you get towards the top. So, watch your, your angles. If you don't, then it'll come back and haunt you. But as you can tell, it laid in there really flat. And that little groove right there would be perfect to put another pass in. Come back in there and clean it with a wire brush on the driver. Now this right here, I was going to show how to do a weave cap. I went ahead and put those other two passes in so I could just film this one spot. But if you'll notice down on the left that I, my rod angle, it's not supposed to change during the entire time. I'm sure it'll change a little bit as I get higher because my hand will get closer and I'll, my hand won't be able to go in there. But you want to stay as close as you can to the same. As you can tell here, I'm weaving back and forth kind of in a zigzag kind of box fashion. Uh, this is my technique of welding. Other people do different things. But uh, what I normally do is go really slow across the pan there, and then I'll come up and go right back across my same puddle, overlapping about halfway. That seems to work out pretty good for me. And you don't get any undercut if you pause long enough in your corners. That's, that's what you're trying to prevent. Now, if you notice, I'm going a little too fast going through the middle. And what happens is my weld winds up being a little bit concave. The 332nd is a very, very hard rod to actually keep it from being concave. Uh, you need a larger rod. Here's the restart. Start up high and then come back into your crater where you left off. You go really slow when you tie in that, that first weld back into the weed. You want to go really, really slow. And then once you pick up, you can just go right back to it. Easy as that. But if you notice my rod angle down there on the left, it hasn't changed from the bottom to the top that I'm going to now. Uh, the 7018 is pretty forgiving. You can go back and forth with your rod angle a little bit. Uh, it's going to change the characteristic of your weld. It's going to look a little different. But for the most part, you can you can push that foot pretty hard. You won't get any slag inclusions or any pinholes or anything like that. But if you notice, I'm starting to pick up my hand right there. And that what's going to happen is that weld's going to be a little bit lumpy. See how my angle's changing? Because I'm getting so close to that plate, I can't keep my angle. I'm actually pointing not quite down, but it wasn't far from it. Okay, I'm going to check the slag off. Go real easy with the chipping hammer. Uh, chipping hammer is frowned upon in a lot of places. Give it a good cleaning. I'd rather use a grinder with a wire brush, but I don't want to show my back to all y'all on the camera, so I just decided to do it this way. And there you go. It's not a bad looking weld. It's nice and flat in there, and there's no undercut. It's a little bit uneven. It, you would be surprised how hard it is to film 
welding when you got to get the camera so close it really messes with your angles and how you get them in there so if you can tell that that top inch and a half looks really really good and once again you've got the crater to retie into well guys I hope you got something out of it and I hope you enjoyed it uh, with any of your welding endeavors out there whether you're getting undercut or cold lap or anything like that I, I really this this video was meant for y'all it really was um, thanks again for watching uh, stay tuned for more videos from me and we know how so y'all take care I'll see y'all next time from Classic World